Welcome to this video tutorial about creating an adventure game in Kodu. So first of all I'd suggest that if you haven't done some of the earlier skills videos where we've done things like creatables and used variables and things like that, I would go back and do those as this is maybe slightly more complicated than the things you've done before. Um, if you're ready to, to start then let's go. Um, first thing you need to do is create the level that I've got here so what I've done is I've made a very simple world and you can see what it consists of um, I've just built a straightforward landscape uh, which has an island a rock which is fencing off this part of the island here and then at the back there's a star now the star is a portal that the players got to reach which will get them out of the level and win the game and in, inhabiting the level is your player which is this uh, rover here the guard which is another rover and an apple um, well let's show you how it works so when I'm in the game basically I can't get through the level okay so what I have to do maybe if I interact with the guard and he says you cannot pass till I have my apple back so I know that what I've got to do is collect an object and give it to the guard and hopefully then I'll be able to get through so oh look there happens to be an apple here obviously in a real game we'd make it a bit more difficult than that he picks up the apple collects the apple returns it to the to the guard who thanks him and then through the barrier we go and we won the game now obviously a real adventure would be a bit more complicated than that but what that does give you is an idea of what really a simple kind of fetch quest might look like and how we can have characters that, that speak and interact and how we can use objects in the world to help us create and solve our problems so before we start the first things you need to do when you built the world is kind of set these two characters up here now one of the things i've done is you'll notice if i go to change settings on the rock what i've actually done is i've made it first of all i've made it invulnerable just in case somebody's bright idea is to shoot it and get rid of it that way and I've also made it immobile so that your character, the player character, can't push it out of the way. Uh, and I've also changed the size of the rock. You can see it's much, much bigger than a normal rock it's to make sure that there's no way past that point. And then I've done nearly the same thing with the uh, rover here. Same settings I've made. I've made this guy immobile as well, so you can't get out of his way. You can't push him out of the way. And you'll see that if I go charging into him you'll see that he just stays boom, in the right place so let's look at the programming I've done for each of these characters and try and give you a sense of how it works um, the first first character we'll have a look at is your player character okay so what I've got here is a fairly straightforward set of commands so when keyboard arrows move so we know about movement and this you may not have seen before when bumped apple grab it so you do have a series of commands that you can use to actually interact with objects if i actually even put it on here these are under the holding menu so we've got give drop and grab so i want to grab the apple and then what i'm saying here is okay also if i bump the apple i want to set the black score to one point now this isn't the actual score. I'm not using black score to represent a score value. I'm using it as a variable, as like kind of a, as Peter data to represent what my character has and hasn't done in the game. So when I set it to one, it means that he successfully picked up the apple. And then I do another when down here, when bump rover, and you notice I've indented this line here. So so it will ask another question. So you know, when you bump rover also check when you've got the apple have you got the apple and if you have give and the way give works is it will give whatever you're holding to uh, whatever character that you you interact with so that's relatively straightforward hopefully obviously if you want to use this code yourself you can pause the video and, and add it and then come back to the next little bit so let's have a look at the code for the uh, guard and there's quite a bit that we've added here you can see right so first of all we begin with a 
when bumped again so this when bumped rover so this line says okay has the player bumped into me and if it has we then have to do a check because we want to know is the is the player carrying the apple when they bump into him okay. so we ask the second question when black equals one and then we can ask yet another question you can see now i've indented three times so well invented indented twice so here and here so we can ask a question within a question so it's saying when you've bumped the rover then see that when you've scored black one point when, when black is one also now check to see if your character can see an apple so if the player stood there in front of him with an apple he'll grab it and keep hold of it hopefully grab it once and then we have a line down here it will say something if you remember the guard responds when he receives the apple so if I just double click on say you can see I've just added a thank you in there you can add more text if you want to than that and then I've set the score to two points and you'll see why I've set it to two points in a minute so you'll notice that these scores aren't actually adding player scores as such I'm just adding changing the value by one because these scores represent something now the last line in here when black does not equal two say once whoops, again say and then it reminds the player that they can't pass until they have the apple back now it says that because the points aren't equal to two and they're only equal to two if the player's given the apple over to the robot so that's why that line's done like that and you'll notice that that line isn't indented into the same level as these it's it's at this level because this is the where we're checking to see the value of the score okay so that will only run that line if you bumped into the robot so a, li a little bit tricky to understand you might want to have a look at, look at the code and, and, and just make sure you're happy with it um, the indentations are important because if you get the indentations wrong your code won't work in the way that you expect it to right so we've looked then at how we've used score to control uh, what's going on and whether the player has or hasn't got the apple and at this point we set it to two didn't we if you remember um, so let's look and see what happens with that and why we've done that the last one of the last bits of code I need to show you is on the rock and the rock does have a very simple bit of programming attached this simply says when scored black equals two vanish once and that's just straightforward so that means if score equals two what must have happened is the uh, rover must have given the apple to the guard so it will say okay two and then it will vanish it will disappear and that leaves the pathway clear for your uh, robot to go up the path to the star and obviously what i've added is a very simple bit of programming to the star just to say if the if the if it collects with it collides with him end the game with a win so relatively relatively straightforward bit of programming i'll sh show you how Works. let's just have a look at that just so you can see what I mean really easy if it bumps into the rover win the game okay so that's that so hopefully that's given you some idea of how you can create a very simple adventure game using code obviously you can make something more complicated than that and, and some other things you might want to think about in there are adding other elements of speech because we've not got the the player saying anything so maybe we could have it that when he gives the apple he could say something so when he's got the apple give and uh, maybe what we could do is do, do look under actions and then you say and get him to communicate to make it a little bit more interesting the other thing perhaps we could do with our characters especially when they're conversing just to make the characters a little bit more interesting is we could make them express an emotion um, and again if you go under do and actions you've got uh, express then you can see under express you've got all kinds of different emotions that the players that the characters can demonstrate in different circumstances so i hope that that's 
been a relatively straightforward walkthrough of how to create an adventure game in Kodu. Go and have a go at it yourself, pause a video and, and, and add the code bit by bit and if you need to watch it again, do so. And if you get it to work, try experimenting with expressions and adding more dialogue and see how you get on. Good luck.